it's a lot of hard work and it really separates the people who have that dedication and that commitment to training and uh, I guess that calm collected attitude on the field of play and those are the people that we're going to be seeing right now and this is one of them and he came out on the scene in 2015 I believe it was and we saw him in I the think final. It was 2014. Is that in Lausanne? In Lausanne. Yeah. yeah. Lausanne. And he was he was one of those people that everybody was like where did this guy come from and he just Brazil. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> Master of the obvious, I know, I know. Marcus Delmeda from Brazil. And look at his world ranking, 27th in the world ranking. And I was trying to find out what he shot during qualifying, and I'm not sure it was in the top 20. In fact, let me look at some of my other reams of information that I have here as you look at Wei Chun Heng from Chinese Taipei come out to accept the challenge. Marcus Dalmeida was 45th after the ranking round. 45th. And he came back. He came back. He's got a very, very good match play average, I believe. So um, when he gets into the one-to-one -one situations or one-on-one -on -one situations, he can throw it down. Mm -hmm. And he's got a very, very focused uh, demeanor when he's actually on the field of play. You're going to see it. And uh, he doesn't, there's no hesitation from him, which is what you need at this stage. Marcus de Almeida from Brazil, defeating Mohamed Akmal Noor Hasrin of Malaysia by the score of seven to three in the quarterfinals and then falling by a score of seven to three to Im Dong Hyun in the semis. Meanwhile, Wei Chun Heng, a five, or excuse me, 6-4 win over Brady Ellison in the quarters and then dropping a 6-2 decision to Kim Woo Jin in the semis. Should be a good one and it's underway. Wei Chun Heng almost getting it into that 10 ring. And a good look at Marcus Delmeda. All the way from Brazil. Ooh. Wow, that is very close. It's, it's going to be a nine star for sure. Second shot's a better one. His follow through was a little bit more erratic than you'd like to see, but he was probably getting pushed over by the wind and trying to, trying to float back into the 10 ring. And that's just the result of uh, movement when the shot goes off. That's a solid nine for Marcus Tomeda, and the scores are calling his first arrow a definite nine. So right now, Wei Chung Heng unofficially in the lead and can clinch this with a 10. That's a nine, and Marcus Dalmeida can tie with a 10 now. Not to be for the man ranked 27th in the world. He'll fall in the first set by one point, 28-27. Marcus Dalmeida, you know, and it's interesting. You said that he came out, it was 2014, so that's three years ago. You think he's older. He's 19. <laughs> he's 19 years old. Oh, my goodness. He's got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, archery in front of him. A lot of matches, a lot of tournaments. And he's already had a lot behind him and, and that he's already accomplished so much in his short time on the World Cup stage. And uh, I remember seeing him as a 16-year-old, and at one point he was, uh, well, I can't say that it's changed or anything, but he was shooting against Brady Ellison yes, in Lausanne. And uh, I had to make the comment as the uh, event announcer that Marcus Almeida was 10 years younger than Brady when they were shooting that match. <laughs> I kind of got a snide little look from Brady after I said that, but it is true. He yeah, appreciate is that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. But I, I can't talk. I'm, I'm one of the older guys no, on the field, not, too. We're not going to talk about age. <laughs> but Marcus Almeida, again, 19, and he's here in the bronze medal match. That is a really good... Uh, testament to the mental game that he's got and the form and composure that he has at this level. You know, just seeing him again makes that accomplishment when he was 16, winning a silver medal at the World Cup final, all the more remarkable. And doing it against Brady Ellison. And that's about two millimeters out of the 10 ring. The man with the lead. Seems intent on keeping that lead. Building upon it. Marcus finds his mark. 
That was a very good shot. Release came clean off the string, straight back. Good follow through, and 10 is the result. And we are tied. Marcus can put some pressure onto Wei with a 10 here. Not saying that there's no pressure out there right now, but. I'd say there's a fair amount, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is, that's the 10. He responds to the pressure. The best that Wei can do right now is tie with a 10. And we don't have that tie. Nope, not going to happen. We are now tied with the set points, 2-2. Two -two. And Marcus Dalmeida holding his own on the field of play. I, I, I should mention that we didn't see him on any, I think, yeah, any finals venues since 2014. I, have, I think I, you're correct. Yeah, so this is a really good comeback for him. And I, I remember noting, uh, kind of just in my head to myself, that I hadn't seen him perform really, like, well since 2014. I have to think, this is just pure speculation on my part, but there was so much attention being paid to him with the run-up to the games in Rio. Yes. Being one of the top hopes Brazil had of getting a medal. And he's at such a young age to have that much put upon you, I gotta think has got to have an impact. It's gotta have it an does. effect. It does, for sure. And I mean, I saw commercials with him featured in it. And there was a lot of stuff that he was doing. And sometimes a lot of that PR stuff can cut into your training. And uh, then you don't get as much training or a, a good quality training that you once had. And uh, yet leading up to the games, that's a lot of pressure. I there mean, was a lot of expectation for him. There was, so it's good to see him back. Nine. Match tied at two all. And we start off with a nine from Wei Chun Heng, who's only three years older at 22 years of age. Three years can be a, a that's almost a full Olympics. Is that kind of like dog years or something? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we actually talk in, 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 archery, in yeah. quadrennials. Uh, yeah. I mean, like how many Olympics ago was that? <laughs> tied at nine in this third set. Tied at two in the match. <laughs> Mr. Wei Chung Heng, who's made more of a name for himself really as a, a team archer, a mixed team with Tanya Ting, trying to make a name for himself now in individual competition. Both of them searching at this point. Still trying to find their Mar groove and their range. And Marcus Dalmeida has not left the gold, which is a really good accomplishment as well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Wei is putting some pressure. Again, Wei hasn't left the gold either in this match. Putting some pressure with an X on his last shot and see if Mr. Dalmeda can follow that up with a 10 of his own. And he doesn't. That's just out almost an eight. And it is now 4-2 unofficially for Wei Chung Heng over Marcus Dalmeda. Wei Chun Heng with the silver medal in the team competition so far today. Then in mixed team, a silver medal. So he's had two silver medals, now going for the bronze individually. And Marcus Dalmeida, he's won an only chance at a medal here in Salt Lake City. Yeah, I don't think they even brought any uh, female recurve archers for Brazil. I'm not, I'm not, don't quote me on this one either, but I don't remember seeing at least the usual faces that I'm used to seeing from Brazil. They could have brought some new faces in that I didn't notice, but uh, it wasn't, uh, there was no mixed team chance for him. And I knew that he had a team round chance, but they were eliminated, uh, I think fairly early, unfortunately. If they made the cut, I'm not, again, I'm not sure. I haven't looked over the results, but here we go. Marcus Dalmeida will be leading off because he is the archer who is trailing. And Wei Chung Heng has a chance at this bronze medal right now if he can close this set out with a strong score. Dalmeida trying to put up a fight. And that one way to get with a nine. You can see those uh, those holes in his target. They're right around that ten ring. Yeah, there, there's not a lot really really centered. No. No. So we're tied right now. Uh, yeah, Wei Chung Heng has an X at least down range, and Mr. Dalmeda does not have an X yet. And I can't say that's bad shooting or anything, but what that might just be is a slight amount of tension in the fingers where the arrow isn't just landing straight in the middle. And a nine. A 10 here from Marcus will put more pressure onto Wei. 
And he did catch landing in the bottle in that second set, ending that set with a pair of tens, but has not had a ten since then. It's six straight arrows without finding the center of the target. It's unfortunate, but a ten here for Wei will win. Let's see. Nine. And we are unofficially tied. Actually, I won't even say unofficially. I, I can see that there are no line calls. Officially, it is going to be 5-3 in favor of Mr. Wei Chung Heng. And Marcus Dalmeda will be shooting first. And now, what, what I'm talking about with uh, arrows that are less centered um, and arrows that are kind of like going around the ten ring is that sometimes, with especially with recurve archery, um, the amount of tension that you have in your fingers plays a great deal with where your arrows are landing down range. And I'm not talking about shooting like arrows in the red or in the blue or whatnot. When you're actually centered in the middle of the gold, if you've taken your bow and you've sighted it in and you know that you can be hitting X's and you've got that shot and you just deviate slightly away from that shot, that, that specific shot that puts you in the middle, that will start to make your group open up which is what we're seeing, I think, from Marcus Dalmeda with all of those nines that are encircling the 10 ring. So that's purely tension in the string fingers, and it could also be on the, Sorry, the bow hand as are well. Are you saying too much tension and not enough? Too much. Too much. Too much, yeah. Not enough, you probably wouldn't be able to pull the string back, but <laughs> it, it could just be the tension of being here on the finals field for the first time in a few years. Grips and rips it. And it sounds like one of his stabilizers was loose, but that doesn't affect where anything is going to go. That's oh. nice. We're tied again. All this man needs is one more point. And yeah, mi if Mr. Wake can just match Marcus Dalmeda with whatever he's shooting, he will win this match. Nine. Nine Still again. seeking the 10. That's eight shots in a row that have been nines for Marcus Dalmeda. Ten. That might, that could be the arrow. We'll see what happens in this next arrow from Dalmeda. Took me at the back breaker. We'll have to see what happens on the next two arrows. The one from Dalmeda. Ten. Oh, there we go. Did he catch it? That is a 10, yes. Gold is good for Wei. A nine would get it done for Wei Chun Hang of Chinese Taipei, who is your bronze medalist in Salt Lake City. Yeah, and as you heard George say over the announcements over there, both archers stayed inside the gold, which is, <laughs> that's really good shooting um, from both archers to be able to maintain all of your arrows in that middle yellow ring. And both of them were almost neck and neck every single end. Four tens for Wei Chun Hang, three for Marcus Dalmeda. Everything else, nines. And that 110 could have been that, that could deciding have been the factor. Right, yeah. That's the difference. This is a tough sport, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, I mean, it, it, and it can be completely the opposite way around. Um, and I'll use myself as an example at the Arizona uh, Arizona Cup earlier this year I had a match against one of my teammates Hamilton Nguyen and in that match I had a serious serious uh, brain fart and I for lack of a better term for yeah. lack of a better term I just was not into the shot that I was making and I missed I completely missed the target my arrow went skipping across the Arizona desert I had to walk behind the targets to go find it